And we're artists that make things out of circumstance. We'll be going for a walk and they'll suddenly find something like a, a dead mouse on the street and I'll put it in my pocket and I'll take it home and I'll put it in the freezer because I know it will come in useful one day. After two or three years, we'd acquired over 100 things, mainly small mice, baby rats, shrews, the odd toad. So we're wandering around the Egyptian galleries. All of a sudden, it all went click in my head, and I knew exactly that I'd got this fantastic accumulation of mummified creatures. repetitive strain injury from cleaning out the innards of all of those creatures as well. I'm having to see a physiotherapist. There was a few times that I was nearly sick, but um, I got over it. Well, it seems particularly appropriate to have Noble and Webster's work here in this gallery because of the phenomenon of sacred animals being mummified in their millions during the first millennium BC in ancient Egypt. These were animals that were bred in captivity, slaughtered at a very young age, prepared as mummies and then sold to pilgrims who were visiting temples. People see these works and they tend to look at the light source and believe that there's a slide projecting a shadow onto the wall. The shadow is actually made from a meticulous placing of the objects on the actual sculpture. I want people to be inspired and awed by something which is new. I suppose the British Museum is full of old antiquities and because they've passed the test of time they've become awe-inspiring and things that are modern and that are new almost get rejected as being cons and tricks and um, it would be nice to place something that's incredibly contemporary, contemporary art, amongst these ruins and to, and to get some kind of magic from modern art.